Hi, this is Ground Control, a Eurorack sequencer by Endorphins, throwing their hat in the ring for master brain of your setup. It has three monophonic melodic tracks and another drum sequencer with eight lanes. It has an Ableton Live style session grid where you can either swap out different patterns for different tracks or swap out all the patterns at once for all the tracks. Aside from playing pre-programmed patterns, you can also play any one of the instruments on any one of the tracks live. And it also has an arpeggiator for every one of the melodic tracks. In this video, I'll take a look at what it can do, as well as pros and cons compared to other sequencers. More of this track at the end of this video. Before I start, a quick disclosure. Endorphins sent ground control over for review. It did cost me, but much lower than retail. As always, they have no say over the content of this video. This channel is funded by viewers who subscribe to my content and book updates on Patreon, YouTube Premium and Ads, and store affiliate links in the description, which help the channel regardless of the product you choose to buy. Let's start with an overview of the layout. It's pretty clear to see Ground Control's defining feature up front, a two octave keyboard, which I've not seen in any other Eurorack sequencer, though I've seen a couple with one octave, like Vector and Mother32 if you rack mount it. These pads aren't velocity or pressure sensitive. It's up to you to modulate that. They're a little bit hard to the touch, but if entering notes with a knob ever bothered you, you'll feel at home here. The two octaves are particularly useful because Ground Control also has a built-in arpeggiator with a latch function. So you're free to use it as a performance arpeggiator as well, which I think is pretty unique. These pads also double as a TR style sequencer for the drum pads. So select a one of the drums and you can sequence it using these pads more on that in a bit as you can see from the plethora of outputs here it's both a drum sequencer with eight different lanes for the drum track as well as three additional melodic tracks with cv and gate pairs though no mod or velocity output for any of these three melodic tracks there is a single mod output for the drum track continuing down the module with the overview you've got mutes for each of the tracks a global mute bus for all the drum tracks or for the individual lanes if you like as well as for the three melodic tracks in terms of additional connectivity you've got trsb style both midi in and out and midi device and host jack so you could power say an external keyboard with this or connect to another device using the device port on the right are four CV and four trigger inputs. These can be used to reset each of the four tracks and for modulating internal parameters. As of the making of this video, this functionality wasn't available for testing. It's promised in a future update. The external CV inputs, I mean. If your case doesn't have a built-in power supply, you can feed power through this DAC, through the goodbye input, and then use a flying bus board connected to the back of the module to power additional modules. Check the manual for the exact specs, but it can deliver up to a thousand milliamps, which isn't too shabby to power quite a few additional modules. In terms of workflow and usability, ground control is fairly straightforward to use. There aren't that many hidden shortcuts. There is a large four character display, which gives you the basics. You'll typically be editing parameters using a combination of the left and right and plus and minus buttons. So for example, to set the tempo, we can of course tap tempo, but also change it in single increments using the plus and minus buttons or 10 step increments using the left and right buttons. There are three main shift style buttons or functions, the tempo button, the star or project button, and the track buttons. These work as shift controls using other buttons on the panel. For example, the tempo button is a shift for these commands here on the bottom row of pads. So for example, if we wanted to change the number of ratchets in a pattern, we would hit tempo and then I or ratchets here, and then we could determine the number of ratchets in this pattern. 
This button is mainly used for saving and loading patterns or projects, and then these typically impact track's functions. So for example, if we wanted to change the relative speed of track three, you can see it's one eighth here. We can just change it like that or like that to change its relative speed. There are a few other combos, and luckily there's a list of all of them at the end of the manual. There is a bit to remember by heart here, but not too much. Usually there will be a small label above a button to indicate what it does or what its shift function is. That's pretty much it for the overall navigation. We'll get into sequencing in a bit. Before that, let's talk about project scope. Each of the four tracks, one drum and three melodic, can have up to 64 steps, where the drum track is really eight lanes and each of them can have up to 64 steps as well. So the kick could be an eight step pattern and the hi-hat can be a four step pattern. The four tracks also don't need to run at the same speed. You've got four equal subdivisions or multiples, as well as a triplets version for each of these, which you can access with a long press. Zooming out from the individual track, you can store 24 different patterns for each of the tracks. So for example, if I choose melodic track one, I could go ahead and choose a different pattern. So A means pattern A, and there's B, C, D, and so on. There are 24 different patterns in total for each of the tracks, which you can also access quickly using these pads on the bottom. A set of 24 different patterns for each of the four tracks is called a project, and you also have quick access to 24 projects, which are all stored on the SD card. You don't have access to the SD card from the panel. You need to take the module out and it's accessible on the bottom PCB. It's a little bit hard to get to, but you can get to it with a tweezer. The SD card is also used for firmware updates. Unfortunately, you can't access it currently using the um, device port. Maybe in the future, they'll add that. So that's the module overall. Before we dive into the details, let's just take a look at the overall setup. You can use drum tracks one through eight to trigger Obviously, any trigger bell module here, I made life easy with seven inputs into Queen of Pentacles, and then an addition output number eight into Apex here. This is a multi-purpose module based on Peaks by Mutable Instruments with the Dead Man's Catch firmware, which adds a lot of algorithms to it. Drums are fed into Golden Master, which is an EQ style compressor module, and then that's fed back into Blue Box as a separate drum track. Melodic track number one, is a voltage controlled sample drum from Erica fed into the mixer again with some reverb from Blue Box. I've also got an LFO running into an attenuator in 1UOC, which is an ornament and crime module modulating the filter cutoff in sample drum. Melodic track two is Godspeed into a filter by Instro IO47 going into a VCA with envelopes coming from a second one UOC, a second Ornament in Crime. This one, by the way, has the Hemispheres firmware. This is the original Ornament in Crime firmware. It's got two envelopes, one controlling the VCA, and another slow envelope controlling the filter cutoff. That's then fed into ModBap's Performer which is a multi-effect with reverb and delay, and also a really nice um, tape style distortion and warble color effect. That too is fed in stereo into the mixer, and then finally, melodic track number three is Intelligil Atlantis into Dismodos Versio, running the alternative Ruina Versio digital distortion firmware. then running into Intelligil's multi-effects and finally into the mixer as well. Not used in this patch, but in case you're curious, this thing EX, which pretty much does everything, it has a really interesting new granular mode, which is what I wanted to use here, but I didn't have time to learn it. Uh, check that out if you're interested. And then this is a little remote control for the 1UOC modules. This HBO is summing up uh, the reverb into here and then ES8 had I wanted to multi-track into a computer, I could use that as well as send CV out if I wanted to control anything here from a computer. I'm not doing that in this case. Okay, so now that you hopefully have an idea of what's going on here, let's take a look at Ground Control's workflow in depth. I'll start with the arpeggiator, which I think is a pretty rare feature for Eurorack modules. The only other place I've seen that is in hair mode. 
please comment below if you're aware of others. Anyway, here you actually have keys that you can play with across two octaves. So uh, I think a pretty awesome and unique feature, which is standard on other uh, external controllers, of course. Anyway, to turn it on, you pick the order here, not the speed. The arpeggiator works at the track speed. So it's either up, down, random, or order. Let's go with the basic up. And this button acts as a latch. So down would be this, random would be this, order would be the order which I pressed it. And um, there's actually a cool feature, which is probability, which applies to the arpeggiator too. Which I think is pretty neat. That applies to the sequencer as well on a per track basis. Like I mentioned earlier, you can set individual speeds holding the track and choosing a speed. So let me exit this. So 16th, 8th, 4th, and then triplet versions with a long press. So track speed determines the arpeggiator speed. And these determine the arpeggiator direction. Now there's another arpeggiator menu that isn't implemented currently. So if you press menu and then press the arpeggiator, it just says soon. But I think pretty much all the basic arpeggiator functions are programmed here. Stop, by the way, is like an exit or no for menu. I think I didn't show you, but if we latch this, you can also um, have the arpeggiator work across multiple octaves. So two octaves, three octaves, and yeah, that's the limit on the up. It can also go down. So that's nice. Now another neat function of the arpeggiator is that you get one per track. So let's say I've got this running on track three. I can go into track one and then uh, activate an arpeggiator there. And uh, let's maybe have this go faster or triplets. Pretty neat, I think, to have multiple arpeggiators running across all the tracks. And um, yeah, notice they're still running if, if the pattern isn't. So you need to find out the track that's running and then turn that off here. The arpeggiator works as a roller on the drum tracks. So if I activate it, I get a roller again, whether the pattern is running or not. And yeah, so I can, I can have the pattern running and then add a roller to it. And that pretty much sums up the functionality of the arpeggiator. Let's take a look at the sequencing. For that, maybe I'll choose an empty track and yeah, let's choose D for all of them. So D, 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 there we go. You can clear out tracks, by the way, by holding project and just touching the mute buttons. Project clear twice sets all the tracks to a default length of 16 steps. Let's just unmute these. So sequencing, you can either play live into tracks or step sequence in one of two ways. And there's actually a helpful metronome. So if I go into tempo, which is menu and hit this button, I can choose a uh, metronome for either the drum tracks or tracks one, two or three. Remember each track can have its own different relative speed, which is why you have four different metronomes. So yeah, select the drum track, hit record, and these pads aren't that suitable for finger drumming, but let's just maybe set a basic. Uh... That's our kick. And uh, let's maybe. Cool, and we have a beat. I'll disable the metronome, we get the idea. If you wanted, you could of course also play live into the melodic tracks. So. And what you play is quantized to the grid. If you wanted, you could also play live using an external MIDI keyboard in which case, by the way, ground control would record velocity as you play, though you could only play that velocity out 
through the MIDI output. One exception to everything being quantized to the grid is the swing or shuffle function. Anyway, that's live sequencing. Let's talk about step sequencing. I'll clear this track out. So step sequencing melodies is easy. A short press on record and then just type in the uh, melody. That's a four step melody. It'll automatically truncate the sequence to however long you play. Don't forget we can change the track speed here. You could also add rest in the middle. So I could uh, say add a rest here and then add this and slides either by hitting the slide button or just by playing a slide. Let's just do this too. So that plays like this. I don't think this will win acid pattern of the year, but you get the idea. Patterns, like I mentioned earlier, can be any length you want. So not just um, eight or 16 steps, but anything in between or anything above up to 64 steps. Let's just keep that at this. So that's one way to step sequence. Another way is to long press record, and then you can travel between the different steps. You can see which note is included in each, each step. These two dots mean that you're at the end of the pattern. So you could easily change, say, this to this, and uh, so on. <laughs> Definitely getting groovier. When you're in the editor, by the way, you could also edit additional uh, parameters like, for example, uh, velocity for a step. Again, relevant only when you've got uh, notes sent out through MIDI. So that's step sequencing for the melodic tracks. It's identical. For the drum tracks, you've got a bonus Zox mode. So you could step sequence if you wanted using a short press. So this is um, my drum pattern. Let's mute this for a bit. So say that I wanted to... Um, to add a, a step sequence snare, I could uh, say um, hit record, uh, add two rests and a snare and a rest. And I'd get that. But a long press on record will get us into a TR style or Zox style sequencer. One thing you'd immediately notice is that you only have 14 pads here on the bottom. The way we get to 16 steps is by adding this as step two and this as step 15, which is a bit confusing in the beginning, but you get somewhat used to it. I've actually marked these little dots using a Sharpie on the panel to show me where the beats are. So say for example, that I wanted to uh, sequence a four on the floor right now, my kick pattern is it's going to here. Long press on record, it's this. So that's one kick and that's the other one that I sequenced live, but I could get to four on the floor just by hitting these markers. So step one, two, three, four, and so on. 15, 16, go on to, um, yeah, add uh, whatever I wanted. Let's say that I wanted this as hi-hats. So just, yeah, fill it in. So that's how Zox or TR style sequencing works. When you edit steps, you can also go ahead and add, uh, let's say, uh, ratchets to a step. So let's say I wanted to add a ratchet to step 12. I'd hit that and I'd get a ratchet. Let's maybe add another, oops, um, ratchet here as well. And uh, the number of ratchets is global. So you access that through the menu global per track. Hit ratchets, and then you set the number of ratchets. So if I wanted only two ratchets, then I'd get that. And I could also go to uh, four, or up to, up to four. And we'll hear this better if I make this shorter. So that's my ratchets. See if I forgot anything. You've got uh, velocity uh, for the drum lanes as well. Again, relevant only through MIDI and also a uh, mod lane, mod CCs for programming what comes out this output. And if you um, say set a pattern to more than sixty, more than sixteen steps, then you can page through the different pages like this. So fairly straightforward. So that's sequencing. Let's take a look at a few performance features. 
you can transpose a sequence both octaves and uh, by semitones. So for octave transpose, you hold the track and just do that. This is a destructive transpose, meaning that it changes the actual notes in the pattern. And then for semitone transpose, you press both these buttons. So hold these two, and then you use the keypad to transpose the pattern. You can, by the way, transpose all the tracks simultaneously by holding last step. Again, look at the shortcuts at the end of the manual for a few other things that are a bit more obscure. Let's take a look at a few other performance functions. I'll look for an empty pattern. Let's go for L, program something simple into here. So that's pattern L and then maybe let's program pattern M, I think. Yeah, this is M. Let's just do this. Okay. So pattern swapping is immediate if the sequencer isn't running, but if it is, it'll wait for a pattern to complete, which is cool. Now up until now, I've been changing patterns on one track. If you like, you can lock changes across all the tracks. So if I hit both of these together, then everything will swap at once, which may not make sense like this, but assuming, let's say that, I mean, I won't go through all of this, but all of these were the same pattern, then you could easily change scenes, Ableton Live style, just by hitting both of these and going up and down. What else? If I wanted to jump to a pattern that wasn't in sequential order, I could use the letters. So hold, say, track three and press D. Get to my wonderful other pattern or go back to M or L which actually is how you chain patterns. So let me show you that again. You hold track and you keep it held and then say, I want four times L and four times M. So I'll get that. Which is pretty cool. So that's how pattern chains work and you can chain up to 24 patterns in a chain, either the same pattern multiple times or different patterns. Let's see what else we have. You can change pattern playback direction using menu D. So playing forward, backwards, pendulum, random, and a drunken walk, which is sort of a forward backward motion, which may not be that evident in a four step pattern. All right, a few more miscellaneous items, loading and saving patterns. You may have noticed these little dots here. Whenever you see a dot next to the letter, which signifies the pattern, it means that that pattern has changed since the last time the project was loaded. This button gives you access to saving and loading projects and patterns, by the way. A simple pattern save is pressing this pattern, save, and it gets saved. Project functions are accessed using project and last step and it says project here and not pattern. So again, single press is pattern actions, and then pressing this and this is project actions. So that bit isn't that straightforward. It just takes getting used to. Let's go very quickly through all the settings menus to see that I didn't miss anything there. Like I mentioned earlier, the arpeggiator works, but there are additional functions that will be added soon. And um, same goes for nudging tracks backward and forwards added soon. The metronome we saw before, track directions we saw before, external CV to be added soon. That's how these tracks, these CV inputs, sorry, modulate different parameters. Mod out again soon. Shuffle is swing plus minus. Probability we talked about before works on any of the tracks. Ratchets again, we discussed before. Slide time is neat. So the, those three or three slides you heard before, you can change that as well between zero to 100 or 99. Sync divisions, you can sync the clock to different sources, USB or MIDI, and you can also control what goes out of the clock jack, the relative clock speeds on the outputs. And then you've got a um, gate length control, global, not per step, MIDI functions, just various settings. Um, yeah, we won't go through all of these. And then scales, a neat function which isn't implemented yet, presumably will force the notes into specific scales. 
Okay, so let's talk about ground control pros and cons. First, from a high level, it's very clear endorphins are targeting ground control at people who are looking for a Eurorack sequencer that can bring into a case what they've been doing using an external tool, something like the BeatStep Pro or even KeyStep Pro, though not with polyphonic tracks, as opposed to other Eurorack sequencers that may have more non-traditional ideas behind them, like Metropolix, Rene2, or even Black Sequencer. When comparing Ground Control to BeatStep Pro or say KeyStep or KeyStep Pro, there are of course a lot of differences, mainly though, first obviously the price, and then that the keys or pads aren't velocity sensitive, and even if you program velocity in, which you can manually or using an external keyboard, melodic tracks don't have a third velocity or mod lane output. You could of course pair a MIDI to CV module to this and get the um, information out through the MIDI output. I think if you get this, you pretty much accept the fact that you only have pitch and gate outputs and you'll modulate velocity some other way. I think it would have been nice if they added polyphony though, so that if you do have a polyphonic module that can accept MIDI or maybe even an external device, you could sequence that from here. There's also no support for polyphony in the sense of splitting a polyphonic track across multiple outputs. Of course, what you get when you give up those tracks is eight sequencer tracks for the drums, which is very rare for Eurorack modules to have both multiple drum track lane outputs and multiple melodic tracks. There is, of course, the one physical mod output lane, at least in the current firmware, that's tied to the drum tracks. Maybe they could attach that to one of the melodic tracks. Presumably, that's the plan for the mod out menu. A big pro for ground control is that there's very little to no menu diving. Most of the important functions are immediately accessible using key combos that are mostly intuitive and easy to remember. Yeah, there are some menus you need to dive into using the bottom pads, but those are mainly for configuring things as opposed to performance functions. To wrap up the hardware pros and cons on the cons side, the TRS MIDI is type B. Even though this comes with a dongle, it would have been nice if it could automatically detect MIDI A or B on the input and let you choose MIDI A or B on the output. That said, I think having both a MIDI host and device jacks more than makes up for that. Final pro on the hardware side is the power input letting you use this as a power supply for a small to medium sized case. On the firmware side, like I mentioned, quite a bit of features are coming. And while those would be nice, even as is, ground control is a ton of fun. I think the fact that it has both an arpeggiator and a sequencer and a TR style sequencer is a pretty big deal for people who need those functions in their case. What ground control doesn't currently have that other Eurorack sequencers are, were all the self-patching and generative style features, meaning for example, gate tracks that are separate from melodic ones, variable step lengths for individual steps and self-modulation options, though with the upcoming external CV capabilities, one can hope for some more non-traditional surprises there. I see this mainly as a performance module, but I know someone will ask in the comments, there's no song mode, even though you can chain patterns and even create different chains for different tracks, there is no song mode if that's important to you. And like I mentioned earlier, there's no support for micro timing, though with variable track speeds, you can somewhat circumvent that. So to sum it up, if you've been yearning for a multi-track performance oriented drum and multi-track melodic sequencer with built-in piano style pads for inputting notes, as opposed to turning knobs to find a note you're looking for, not to mention playing those pads arpeggiator style, this is pretty much the only game in town to my knowledge and well worth a look as a brain for your setup. That's it for ground control. There's a whole Eurorack for beginners chapter as well as dozens of patching tips and ideas in my ever expanding book available to the good people who support this channel on Patreon. Hit like if this was useful, ring the YouTube bell to make sure you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching.